Welcome to Encompass Live. This is Krista Burns at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event that we've been doing since January of this year. 2009 was when we started. Um, we cover all sorts of Nebraska Library Commission activities, library topics, anything of interest to Nebraska librarians. Um, we have sessions done by NLC staff. Also, we have guests that come in sometimes. Um, we do these every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, so you can attend live if you want to. We also record everything, so you can listen to recordings if you're not able to attend our live sessions. Uh, okay, this morning we are doing uh, how to lead a book group for adults or kids. <laughs> um, and we have Lisa Kelly here from the Library Commission and Vicki Wood from Lincoln City Libraries to take you through all of that. So... Great. Go ahead. Welcome. Thanks for joining us this morning, whether you're live or listening to this later. Vicki and I did a session last fall at NLA on this, and it seemed like it was something worth reprising because Vicki and I are uh, old book group folks. Mm -hmm. I've been in a book group for 15 years, uh, either leading. How about you, Vicki? Yes, I think, well, actually, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I'm in several book groups, but my <laughs> oldest one um, has been about 15 years also. Great. Well, Vicki does the training for the Lincoln City Libraries One Book, One Link, One Link, uh, One Book, One Lincoln Leaders, and she was a great choice to work with because her perspective is a little different from mine. She works with kids and young adults, and I work purely with adults. So we had a great session at NLA last year, I felt, and as a result, Vicki joined my book group. <laughs> so ah. <laughs> um, we have book group tomorrow night, as a matter of fact. Anyway, we're just going to have a conversation. So I would like for you all, we'll try to be mindful of what um, you want to say or have questions about, because truly this is a conversation. We don't have a lot of things to show you. Uh, just some websites that might be helpful to you, and then we're going to, going to promote our own book club kits that both of our libraries offer. So it's really going to be helpful to be interactive with us today. So if we say something that you particularly have a question about, want to take exception with, don't agree with, we would be happy to hear from you because we only have our opinions, and basically that's really what it, I want to encourage you all to get book groups going to maybe get out of a rut if you're in one or to get some fresh ideas if you have a book group and perhaps you just need a jump start. So that's the purpose of the session this morning and please ask away or comment or disagree with us. I just want to say, if you do have a question and a comment, you know, if we're kind of cruising along on talking here and we don't notice it, use the little hand raising icon in the top of your interface next to the green check mark. That'll let us know as a little indicator yes. that you want to say something, that you have a question so that we don't miss it. Go ahead and click on that yeah. and I'll notice that um, yeah. right away. Thanks. Yes, we'd be happy to hear from you. So I've just got some questions. Vicki and I are going to toss them around and we'll add our opinions and please comment. So I want to ask really about optimum book group size, what we think that is, <laughs> and maybe what's too big, what's too small. And then within that, there are sometimes folks who are conversation dominators. Mm -hmm. And then I want to talk about the content of the group in terms of women and men, or that sort of thing. So Vicki, what do you think is the optimum? Well, I think size? when we talked about this last time, um, we talked about the fact that if your group is composed of 15 individuals that you can probably expect at any given time for about half or a little bit more to show up just because of the busyness of people's mm -hmm. lives and different people have different commitment levels to their book groups too. Some right. see it as really, um, you know, if I read the book, I'll show up and some people are very committed and they read the book every single time and, you know, there's just different levels of that. So I, I think if you go over 15 and then you have everybody show up, you're in a little bit of a crazed <laughs> situation. Yeah. Plus, if you have space constraints where you're meeting, it's difficult but I think a, a book group size of 12 to 15 is a good size for okay. a adult type of a book group and you get bigger than that and it's hard to have discussion yeah I guess I would only offer that for me that would be too big because I'd find you'd have two conversations probably going mm -hmm. sometimes it's difficult to keep one conversation going with just eight people right so Vicki Vicki says 12 to 15 I would probably go smaller than that and say eight ish 
is pretty big. Six to eight would be my range. Yeah, I'm thinking 12 to 15, assuming that six to eight would come uh, at any given time. Okay, okay. So they would be on your list and be part of your book yeah. group, but you would assume that at any given time, especially around holidays or in the you're summer, right. you're going to have a lower. And that's true for our book group as well. Mm -hmm. I think that, yeah, we've nailed it. Yeah. But in conversational mode, I think six to eight is pretty uh, maximum. Yeah, because okay. you don't want the dreaded side conversation. <laughs> yeah, we both share Those are that terrible. as a pet peeve. <laughs> yes. And, and yes. I'll, um, what about single sex or co-ed book groups? How have you found that to be in your experience, especially now that you're in a co-ed co Well, co book I find the co-ed book group is extremely rich in terms of getting a different kind of perspective, and I know that's a real stereotype to say men and women think about things differently but you know they really do and I really love being in a group where there are men and I have been in a group where there is a token guy um, usually the husband of somebody that <laughs> and, and he, yeah and I, I find it adds a real richness to it but try getting try finding men that want to be in book groups it's not it's not easy necessarily I worked really hard to get men in my book group but once I got them they've been pretty devoted to stick around well and I think that if you have that if you have that as an expectation and if you have that as something that you want in your book group you do have to be a little bit more careful in terms terms of your, your your casual chat. I mean, I have, I'm have i in a book group that's all women, and one of the favorite ta things in the book group when we're done talking about the books is talking, make, laughing at our husbands, the foibles of our husbands, <laughs> which, you know, is not something that you would want to do. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. that's off the record, you know, of course, but I mean, that's kind of a woman bonding thing mm -hmm. that happens, and I think that, you know, that having men in your book group is something to really, that's interesting to strive for. But I can also see that some women might feel like they want that as their special kind of space, yeah. and they, if they wanted to limit it to women only, that, that would be a legitimate thing too. But I think you kind of have to have agreement among the book group members mm -hmm. about what they wanted and what their expectations are. So it's important to note if you're just starting up a group, then you need to give some thought about gender, content, who you want to include, and I think Vicki and I have talked about this before, that the chemistry of the group mm. is amazingly significant, and there's no telling what one person joining the group could really do to wreak havoc mm -hmm. in a group. So I guess I'm thinking about this as a discussion of pretty intimate book group readers. Now, there are certainly much larger discussions, like One Book, One Lincoln, and that are going to be just a one-time book mm -hmm. discussion. So what we're talking about is a reoccurring book group mm -hmm. and how you really want to build faith and trust in that group. Almost a confidentiality mm -hmm. in some Very respects much. because people might share something in that group not intended to mm -hmm. be widely known. So I think that we can't take that too significantly, but you really have to pay attention to those things. Well, I know there's book groups where people actually have to be voted yeah. into the group, like they come for a trial. <laughs> I've heard about Which, that too. And then I know there's other groups who are extremely casual and say, bring your friends, bring whoever you want. And mm -hmm. I'm in a book group like that. And the dynamic is changing all of the time, which is fine with me. Um, but, you know, I know that the people view that different ways. And some people think that if you keep the same members through all your years, that it will always be the same. And it will be in some senses, but people do change. Yeah. A person, one person might leave, a new person might come in. And it really does, it changes the chemistry. Yeah. And I think that you, you have to be aware of that because some groups just click and they do really, really well. And everybody is, the, you know, it has are kind of on the same page about their book group. And, and the problem is when you get someone that's different than that, and then that sometimes creates problems. In your casual group, or which do you find yourself preferring since you have a couple of options? You've got more intimate book groups and then that casual drop-in book group. Personally, I prefer, I prefer a much more serious book group. And, and, you know, that's I've stayed with my old book group um, because I like the people in it, and it's kind of a loyalty thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't get as much out of it in terms of the reading and the talking about the book as I do with the, the other book group where it's mm -hmm. much more committed. I mean, I feel like it's more committed, it's more structured, and there's more book discussion, and that's more satisfying for me personally. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know that there are other people who are satisfied if you, you talk about the book for 15 minutes. I mean, that's just what their need is. Yep. So it really varies by yeah. the person, I think. Absolutely. 
Okay, how about, um, what are the differences in leading book groups of different ages? And for those of you who are out there maybe thinking of starting a young adult book group for the summer, maybe taking advantage of the One Book, One Nebraska Kids that's available this summer, and you're thinking this might be a good summer for us to get into that, how do you address, and you brought some really great points last fall, Yeah. when you're leading a kid book discussion or young adult, What's your best counsel and advice for that? Well, when I train our new facilitators for our, our parent-child book groups that we have at the library, I make a big point of talking about the, the, the job of the facilitator is much more difficult, I think, than with adults. Adults understand about forming ideas and speaking ideas. <laughs> And kids really don't necessarily have that um, capability. Now, some kids in Lincoln Public Schools, for instance, have been discussing books since they were in second or third grade, and they get it. Other kids really don't understand. So there, the, you need to ask lots and lots of open-ended questions. Kids are also very focused on themselves and their own lives, and so it's really important that you bring in some personal experiences. So with my leading some of those groups, some of the best questions have been, you know, what would you do if you were in Annie's place, if there's a crisis in the book? Or have you ever been in a situation where you felt like that? You know, those kinds of questions tend mm. to elicit, um, elicit more discussion. And of course, there's, that's all also something you have to be careful of because you don't want to be probing into the kids' personal lives and, you know, having them ex express things that they may not be comfortable with. But it's a good way to get them to interact with the, with the text more um, by trying to bring some of their personal experiences in. Have you ever had a kid say something that really derailed a conversation and you had to bring it around? Oh, definitely, yeah. We had it happen one time at a, um, at a book group that we were in where the, par the mother was there and the parents had recently separated mm. and it was a story about actually it was a it was a dog story but it would there was a divorce in the family and it kind of evoked some things for this child that she wanted to talk about which I think was fine but I think the mother was a little wary or embarrassed about it but I think for the child it was a good it was probably a good thing to talk about some of that so, so when the kids are a book group or the parents usually they're also kind of on the sidelines it really varies a lot by the book group it's that chemistry thing we have some where parents Parents really dominate, and the and the facilitator has to step in and let the kids have a chance to talk. And we have other ones where the parents kind of do sit on the sidelines. So obviously, the best of all worlds is equal participation by parents and kids. I'm always fascinated by when kids really agree with their parents and when they really disagree with their parents. <laughs> because that that to me is interesting. The parent and the child read the same book, and they're are coming to the discussion with either very much in agreement or very much in disagreement. And both of those things, I think, are very interesting and make for interesting discussions. And we do explore that as part of our um, book discussion. And they've all read the same title, mostly in your Lincoln City book groups. It's all the same. Exactly. Book. It's not there's, there's, it is actually, there are themes, and we, but we select the four books ahead okay. of time. And so the parent and child take home. They can take home their own copy. They can read it together. Mm -hmm. They can read it aloud together. And what's the frequency want. that that... Once a week for five weeks during the summer. Just the summertime. Mm -hmm. Mostly June and the beginning of July. Is that part of the summer reading program that you offer? It is have? part of it. It's a, it's a more in-depth component of it. We mm -hmm. From that program, we've had two... We've had three groups that have spun off to be year-round groups. There's one at Gear, there's one at Anderson, and there's one at South Branch. Wow. And a lot of the parents that complete the summer, summer book groups move into those groups in the fall because they really enjoy the experience and they want to continue to have that experience with their kids. So, I'm going to ask you all, just because I want to break up our conversation a little bit, would you just check mark yes if you're currently in a book group or you're running a book group right now? Would you just let us know by checking yes? It's clearly we're just going to chat, and but I'd like to hear, oh my goodness, okay. The three of you, three of you are in a book group or leading a book group, and the rest of you are probably, um, okay, let me ask one more question then. How many of you are currently interested in starting a book group in your library? And if you could just click yes. Okay. Two. Okay. Excellent. That's great. Okay. Well, those of you who are interested in starting, please um, please be mindful of whatever questions you might have. If we don't address something, we'll try to get through what I think are the high points. But um, I'm glad to know that, and thanks for letting us know. 
All right, well, how to select a title, how to go about selecting a title. And from the interlibrary loan perspective, I've had people ask me some things, and I'm sure you're a, you're a reader advisor. How do we go about selecting a book? How far in advance? What about the democracy of selecting within a book group? And then last but not least, and we got some fair discussion on this, do you allow genre fiction? And when I say, I mean mysteries, romance, mm -hmm. fantasy, do you think that's relevant for a book group? Mm -hmm. So what do, you, what do you have to say about book selection? Well, I think once again, it's very, um, it very much depends on the group. I mean, I know there's book groups that only read Jane Austen, and there's <laughs> book groups that only read British literature. I know a book group of that like that in Lincoln. In Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but I think that a lot of people probably wouldn't want to be that limiting. And what I think works best in my years of being in book groups is to rotate it among the members for selection. And I also think it's good to have a mix of fiction and nonfiction. Um, and so that's, I just think, works best because then you get exposed to lots of kinds of books mm -hmm. that you wouldn't normally read, which is the upside and the downside of book groups. And you just, let's just say that right out. If you don't want to be, to read things, if you have your reading list, your life list, and you know what you want to read and you don't want to be derailed by reading things that you don't like <laughs> or that you would never read and mm -hmm. you don't, would, wouldn't enjoy that, then you shouldn't be in a book group. Yeah. Um, because that is one of the great pleasures and it's also one of the great drawbacks of book groups in my opinion yeah. is that um, you get exposed to lots of things and I like that but I know that there are other people who feel like they're wasting their time reading things that they didn't select and I've heard book group people in my club say that is why I'm in this group because otherwise I would only read mystery 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 mm -hmm. mystery and so you do have to make a commitment to say, I realize I'm going to read things I don't really want to read. Exactly. I would normally have not been. And I second your opinion about the fiction, nonfiction mm -hmm. mix. And I keep an Excel list, actually, and I keep track of who's chosen, what books they chose. And then I can kind of go around and see whose turn is mm -hmm. next again. And I give them quite a bit of advance notice because... Most of our readers are fiction readers, and I make them choose one fiction and one nonfiction, mm -hmm. and they have trouble with the nonfiction title. Mm -hmm. And our criteria is you have to have the library has to own some copies as well. Some people always go buy their book, but and you can certainly have your criteria. But when you have democratic selection process, be sure to be clear with your selector mm -hmm. what their criteria is. I've had people say, if it's 500 pages, is that too long for a book group? So maybe your group needs to discuss very democratic criteria for selecting. Well, and I think it makes a lot of sense to choose your book, say, six months or a year in advance, I rather agree. than waiting until the end of the meeting and saying, okay, what are we going to read next? I was in a group like that, and then one person would just go, let's just read this, and that person chose almost everything. Yeah, that's not good, I think. And I think that you get a more balanced list if you're looking at it yeah. as a whole year or you know six months or however. Right. And I know one group um, that that actually brings they have a selection meeting and they actually bring mm. all of their they bring the ones that they want to read and then they try to sell it to the other book members <laughs> and then the book members vote. Yeah. and I think that seems like a good yeah. you know they bring two things and they say here's why we should read this book and whoever does the best job of selling their books <laughs> gets That's to read their books which and I think do. is a great way of doing it and then they then they schedule out the whole year That's mm -hmm. interesting. I like that. And we also integrate into my book group then the One Book One Nebraska mm -hmm. and the One Book One Lincoln. And that takes care of selecting for two months. Right. We meet only every other month. Because all the mystery readers get a little peevish when they can't get back to their mysteries. <laughs> so, you know, you have to decide the frequency that you want to get together as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I just have a note about selection. I would never choose a book I'd never read. Hmm. How do you feel about that? Um, I know there's lots of good websites out there that are good for selecting, helping to select books. I mean, there's books that lead themselves more to book discussion than other books. Right. Um, one of the complaints in, in one of my book groups is that the books are always too depressing. <laughs> Can we read something not depressing? And so we did. And then we had nothing to talk about. <laughs> and, you know, that's one of the, you know... 
I don't find the books depressing. I mean, I don't feel that way about them. Maybe I don't get as emotionally involved, but uh, you have to have some meat to something in order to discuss it. And especially when you're building book groups for kids, this is a fine line that you have to um, that you have to walk because you don't want to all to be doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. um, when you have kids, we always try to mix up the genres and get a lot of different kinds of literature in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then ones that will appeal to boys and to girls, which is a little bit more present when you're a child and when you're an adult. But, um, but in order to have a discussion, you have to have something to discuss. And sometimes <laughs> that means that there is a controversy or a, a big conflict or something in the story. And that's important. That's an excellent segue. We didn't cover the genre fiction. Um, so to have something to talk about, can you do that with mystery, romance, and fantasy? Do you think you can do it? Well, I know that we have a young adult group at um, Isley Branch that is a fantasy group, and it's a big group. There's 22 kids, and there were 22 kids in it last summer. Wow. And they are devoted fantasy readers. And I think, yeah, I think they have everything in the world to talk about. They're into fantasy. They, they've read a lot of the classics um, in the genre, and they have things to compare it to. They're young adults, so they're, you know, they're talkative, they, they're thoughtful. And, yeah, I think you could do that. Um, and I think the same could be true for mysteries. If you have people that truly that is their passion, mm -hmm. um, and that is what they're interested in. We tried doing a mystery, and it was a P.D. James mystery in my group, and P.D. James is a you know a wonderful writer but once again there was just a limit into what you know mm -hmm. the things that we found to talk about in that book discussion so but I could see that it could work for people that were passionate about that particular topic so I'm gonna get you to answer this question um, would you ever pick a book that you hadn't read um, I would okay I would if, especially if I had read a review of it or heard from word of mouth from other people that it's a good book and it's a good discussion book or it was an author that I knew but say you finished it then and you went oh I so regret picking that I can't believe I made my book group read that I think it's okay I would move on <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I take I things be, very personally. I would be okay with it if that were. <laughs> okay. That okay. happens. All right, all right. Um, now, this is a book group phenomenon that um, always comes up in the literature that I read in all the conversations. Do you eat or do you not eat at a book group? And I especially want to hear about um, kids in this. We narrative. consider food mandatory for our young adults. Our yeah. young adults especially, food is mandatory at almost any time we have teenagers together, we have food, even if it's just chips and pop. Okay. For some reason, it's the social lubricant of teenagers. Um, with our younger kids, we do a lot of, we, we sometimes do food tie-ins. And so that's really fun. Like, what are some um, examples? Well, yeah. like we did Fudge, the book, Super Fudge, and then we had, and then we had Fudge. These were in the days when we could actually bring baked goods into the library. Now we have to have prepackaged goods, but we can oh. still do something like that. Okay. Um, we've had things where we do icebreaker games with M and M's. Um, mm -hmm. We have we've had different we've done prairie pioneer stories where um, the leader has brought in some kind of food item that is featured in the book. Um, we did a book called Fig Pudding, and we actually had a leader who made fig pudding, which is way wow. above and beyond the call of duty. Wow. But if you think hard enough, there are there are food tie-ins to mm -hmm. lots of things. Um, I know they we did a we did a group called the Dog and Pony Show, and one of the book group leaders brought in Puppy Chow, which is basically um, Chex powdered sugar oh, <laughs> checks. Like, I mean, it's so simple and yet so, you know, yeah. so nice and enhancing. So I, I think that it's less um, with the kid book groups. We try to incorporate it into most of it, but it's not like a big food event. It's mm -hmm. more like, you know, and then we, and then I was in a in one of these book groups with parent child book groups at um, Bethany Branch where we alternated bringing snacks. So each mm -hmm. pair, it was their turn on a different week and one brought the snack and one brought the drink. But Certainly, you're meeting for 45 minutes. Food is not yeah. essential. It depends on the time of day. We were meeting at 7 o'clock at night, so everyone had eaten dinner. You didn't um, get all sugared up at the yeah. end of the night. But I know in, my, in, in adult book groups that food is very central, and I know that there are ambitious book groups who also cook according to yeah. the book group, the book. So if you're doing a book that took place in India, you're having Indian cuisine, and you know, these people have way more time than I do. <laughs> I, my book group used to be like that, too. We had we read The Bean Trees by King 
solver and somebody made beef soup. Exactly. And um, we read The Chamber by Grisham and there were Eskimo pies and there, we all had to eat Eskimo pies. <laughs> It's, so if there's an obvious food theme in a book, yeah. it can be fun to it can play be very, that. It can be very fun, but you certainly don't want to make it obligatory because it can get to be too much. And then I'm, I will mention that in that particular adult book group, it, it put unnecessary pressure on some people. They didn't want to host the group because they weren't themselves cooks, and they felt real pressure because they didn't want to host it then and felt bad that when their turn came around, they couldn't host. So I guess I'd caution all of you who are having it in your home. Maybe you want to be, think about neutral locations mm -hmm. for those folks who feel they can't host it. Mm -hmm. We rotated who hosted based upon who picked the book. If you picked we did the book, too, you for a long the, time. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that went together. But we had one member who really felt, I don't really want to have you to my home, and mm -hmm. I don't cook. Mm -hmm. So that put undue pressure on that member. So I, I, be mindful of what that is for your book group. Well, folks. and people don't have to meet in homes either. Sometimes right. people meet in restaurants. Sometimes book groups that typically meet in, at home, like we do something usually around the holidays where we meet one mm -hmm. time at a restaurant and just have a fun thing. I mean, we've met at coffee houses before because yeah. we had a woman that had a small apartment and didn't couldn't fit everybody in her house. And yeah. So, yeah, meeting outside of homes, of course, is a possibility. And if you're at a restaurant, then nobody has to worry about preparing anything. Right, right. And one last food note. Um, I discovered in my group that I have a social hour before. And this was done to keep conversation on track, really. So this kind of falls into another category. But the book group comes from 6 to 7 at my house. And it is always at my house because most of the people live in my condominium building. So it's really easy to get to. Um, so that we have wine and food from 6 to 7, and then from 7, boom, the book discussion starts. And that allows people who want to come catch up on the latest movie they've seen, how your kid's doing, how's the new job going along. They can get all that conversation out of the way and know that that's the time to do it. And then at 7, I really am pretty militant about mm -hmm. staying on topic. And so far, I think it... I think that works brilliantly because yeah. in my other group, we really vary. Sometimes we eat first and then talk, and sometimes we um, talk and then eat. And it always seems things seem to break down at some point, no matter how we do it. And I think that I think you've really got the key there is sort of like here's our structured social time, mm -hmm. and here's our other time. And you even physically move in your apartment. Yeah. So when you're in social time, you're at a table. <laughs> and when you're in book group time, you're on the couch. And, you know, I just think it's really, it's a brilliant way to structure yeah. it. It works really well. People try to talk about the book sometimes during social time, and I'll shut them down. And yeah. I'll say, not yet, not, not yet. yet. Keep exactly. it to yourself. And so, and they'll even try to talk to me before the book group, and I'll say, you know, I, I want to hear it, but I want to hear it when, when right, we meet. Right, right. So, because in my neighborhood, we're all so close, riding the elevators together right, every day. Right, it's easy to talk about yeah. it. Yeah, so I'm pretty militant about it, but I think it's helped. And so those are just my experiences <laughs> and what I've learned from various well, Lisa, years. that that also kind of segues into the whole question, and I'm not sure what yeah, order this is in, but about work. about having a leader versus not having oh, a leader. Excellent. Now, with ch with kids and young adult book groups, we refer to the the book group leader as a facilitator, and that's really what they are. They are there to mm -hmm. elicit discussion. They're trained, um, and they they have very specific goals that they're trying to you know they're trying to have a discussion. They're trying to have the discussion last a certain length of time. They're focusing on certain themes and ideas and the book. Um, with adults, um, you know, I've, I've experienced a lot of things where people take turns facilitating the discussion, and sometimes where the same person facilitates or where nobody facilitates. And um, my experience, once again, has been that um, having a facilitator makes a big difference, even if you move it around. That person is just basically responsible for doing a little bit of research mm -hmm. about the author, a little bit of background about the book, a little bit more about um, other books that author may have written. Right. And just, you know, I mean, it's not like you have to spend a day, you know, doing research, but just coming a little bit more prepared. And then also pulling yourself out of the discussion more so that you can keep the discussion flowing and one thing that I think is really lost kind of in the art of conversation and also becomes lost in book groups sometimes it's kind of following an idea to its conclusion people tend to change the subject a lot and I think <laughs> that it's a good job of a facilitator to say hey are we done talking about this yet are we ready to switch gears because not everybody may have had time to yeah. put their two cents worth in about certain topics or parts of the book 
And I think that's, a, that's difficult. And I think some people are better at it than others. So if you have someone in your group who kind of rises to the top, and that would be the person probably who's pretty serious, pretty devoted, and enjoys that role, mm -hmm. then that's a great role. Now, there would be people who may not want to be in that role all the time because they want to be more of a participant sometimes. Yes. But I think that it really, really helps a lot, and I think that it, it makes people take it a little bit more seriously. You make lots of really wise points. Now, in our book group, um, there are people who say, I will choose, but I don't want to lead. Mm -hmm. You will lead it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're speaking to me. And that means, and I have no problem with that. I am uh, controlling by nature, <laughs> and I really want it to go a certain way, but I really feel responsibility for the group who come because they read the book right. and I, I maybe I'm an education major I have a curriculum mind towards that and in that tone those people are also my friends right and I, I care about them they've spent some time reading the book that's why they came exactly so I feel a bit of a responsibility so ahead of time I will send out usually the author's website mm -hmm. sometimes there's a website just for the book to specifically if there's a movie tie-in sometimes that's interesting and sometimes there's NPR interviews or something with the author that you can listen to or read ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And I will send those out. And often those really do, oh, that's why the author lives there. That makes right. perfect sense that they would make that setting there. Or that author is a nurse and they had practical advice about that kind of thing. So. Well, and that kind of background information can add so much mm -hmm. to your experience of reading the book. And I've also found that sometimes coming out of a book discussion, I have a really different perspective on the book than I had going in. That's magic. I and think. part of it is because you get to hear other people's points of view and but also people can bring bring something to the book discussion that you didn't get out of that book and also all that extra material can too if you know something about the author's background and where the story came from and kind of you know I mean those things all add a yeah. lot to a book discussion I think. Okay, here's something Vicky and I are facing tomorrow. We have a book that we both <laughs> read. And neither of us liked it. We have nothing but just ridiculously critical things to say about this book. And I'm celebrating my birthday tomorrow. And I thought, well, dang, why do we have to talk about such a crappy book for my birthday? <laughs> so I think it bears witness to what do we do when we, sh what, what do we do when the book just dang? You know, how do we prepare? What kinds of comments do we bring? I think this is practically really good practical advice, especially as the leader. Vicki was asking me, what are you, what are you going to do tomorrow night? How are you going to do? Uh, prepare. So I think that when that happens to, in my group, and I think Lisa agrees with this, and I certainly train all my book group facilitators that work with kids to nix negative comments at the beginning. I mean, it's okay at the end, but if you start out a book group on a negative tone, mm -hmm. like, I really hated this book, then the people who like the books aren't going to say anything. Anything, right. especially kids it really is bad for kids and this was actually a pointer that Pat Leach passed on to me from a mock Caldecott discussion that she was in that you can give negative comments but you always have to wait until the end and we have found it to be very very important mm. I also say absolutely this is my absolute rule about book groups is never start a book group by saying did you like the book yeah I would confirm oh. <laughs> and, and then everybody goes around and go yes no yes no yes no and then it's like okay well, what do we do uh, to that? me, it's and, and to me, there's a more a deeper and more important question than liking a right. book. Um, and I think that if you are in a book group, you're beyond that. And um, and I don't <laughs> think it means you have to like every book. And right. I don't think, but I think that you really need to strategic kind of keep your comments to yourself. You need to listen more. Mm -hmm. You need to um, pay attention to what others have to say. And then, you know, as the discussion's winding down or you're halfway through, if you say, you know, I really had problems with this book and here's what they are. And you also have to be really careful that the pers with the person who selected the book. I mean, they may have no emotional connection to it at all. They just picked it because right. it sounded good. Right. But, you know, you don't want to insult somebody, especially if it was like their favorite book ever. Um, <laughs> It's, it's just all diplomacy, yeah. and I think the important thing is just kind of holding back and, you know, and then also being constructive and not just trashing something and saying, oh, this was hideous. And, you know, I think you have to be able to support your point yeah. of view just like you do in any other kind of discussion. Conversationally, I'll generally wrap up our book group with... Um, who would recommend this book and who would you recommend it to and why? And I'll never, they've noticed that I never asked, did you like it? But I'll say, would you recommend it? And they'll say, you know, I wouldn't. 
but or my father might really like that because exactly. of the steam and and then it helps the application of it wasn't my cup of tea but i know someone who really would right. have enjoyed it and i'm going to tell them about it and i think that's a fantastic question because i think that especially those of us that in, are in the book world where we're recommending books to people right. and we do readers advisory that we really have to think about that appeal what is the appeal of this book right. and i think when we book talk things we have to think of that and that's like a really central question that a lot of people miss out on it's all about i liked it i didn't like it um and that's not the discussion. And the appeal is, and I think that's a fantastic question to ask because I think it, and it's a great way to wrap up a discussion. Yeah, and then it, yeah, it, and one only once I didn't ask it because I so disliked the book, and one person said you didn't even ask about it. <laughs> so well, I, you're I, only human. I gave myself after away. All. <laughs> but um, another thing I would say, and I've facilitated a group now for a while that I I just really run through the characters. I make lists of the characters. <laughs> And then we can talk about each character because that's such a simple way. And I say this to those of you who look for those discussion questions, and there aren't any. And then people will often call our library and say, mm -hmm. do you have discussion mm -hmm. questions on a book? And there are some generic questions that I've sent out from book group mm -hmm. blogs that I think are great. But I often just find that if you start with the character mm -hmm. and you just go down with the list of characters... You don't need the discussion. Please. It really lends itself, uh, especially if you were drawn to a character mm -hmm. in, or they made a poor decision that you know was a deal-breaker in the plot. You can talk about that. Why did they make the decision? Mm -hmm. it, it drives itself... I think. And I think there's a lot of variety out there in terms of pre-made discussion. I think it helps if you're getting your group off the ground right. and you, you don't know kind of the dynamic of the group yet. And we when we did the 13th tale, um, I know I went online and got lots of discussion questions and I would end up pulling one from one and one yeah. from another. Okay, and then that. there would be one that would be like, all these questions are great, you know? And so you hit upon those sometimes where they really, you know, get at the heart of what you want to talk about during the book discussion. Do we have a question? Yes, Kathy just typed a question into the uh, text chat there. Can you read it? We're wondering, oh, Kathy writes, we're wondering if it would work to blog the book discussion for young adults and if you have suggestions for young adults. Well, um, I know, I think that, and I'm, I, I'm kind of embarrassed that I don't more, know more about this, but it just started up at the Gear Branch. We have a strong um, teen group going and they're doing... Um, I think they just started doing an online book club mm -hmm. where they don't actually meet in person, but they do they do their book club online. And I don't know more about it, and I wish that I did. Um, I could find I can probably find out more. But the person that you would want to talk with about that is Sarah Dale Pearsall, who is our teen librarian at Gear Library. And I will just give you her email in case you want to email her. It's just S period. And then Dale Pearsall, which is all one word, D-A-L-E-P-I-E-R-S-O-L, at lincolnlibraries.org. And I'm sure that Sarah would be happy to share with you more about how that online book group goes. Um, on our teen book groups this summer, we have a Golden Sower group, so we have teens who are choosing among the 10 nominees or choosing four that they want to read. Um, we have, um, last year we did a fun one, which was books into movies, and the kids all mm. chose books that had been made into movies, and then they watched the movies. Um, we have the fantasy group that I told you about. Um, we have one group that's very free form. They just choose from a variety of different books. Yeah. Um, so with teens, you know, you're in that kind of nebulous area. Um, if you're a library system, of course, when you're choosing books, you're you're giving a little bit of an endorsement to them. Teens can handle edgier material, but you don't necessarily want to be um, throwing books out there that are going to cause a lot of parent concern or <laughs> uncomfortableness among the group. It also depends on your age range. I mean, if you've got 12 and 13 year olds in your group, obviously there's a big difference between their sophistication and reading level and subject matter than you do if your group is predominantly 15, 16, and 17 year olds. So um, I would look for award winners, obviously, and um, you know, look at what's exciting and fun for kids and and go from there. Does that answer your question, Kathy? You feel like you got what you wanted from? Yep. Thank you. You can just say yes or no. Do you have any other questions? Or Thank you, yes. 
Um, I'll just also mention that Facebook has uh, a book club application that I just learned about this morning. So if your kids are on Facebook, that answered your question? Okay, great. Thanks, Happy. Okay. So if your kids are on Facebook, there's a book club application. And so interestingly, if people can share that way. And they do say in the press release that they don't think it takes a place of face-to-face. But in social networking, there's every kind of person who wants to meet however they want to meet. I'm a face-to-face kind of person. I would not be satisfied with an online book discussion, but possibly kids would. So you may want to ask your kids if they have Facebook and if that's mm-hmm. something they'd want to investigate, as most kids do. And it behooves you all to have Facebooks and see what they're doing in their, in well, their and world. Well, s- and speaking of um, online connections, on, our, on the Lincoln City Library's webpage, if you want to connect into our, our summer information, we do have a list of all of our book group selections there. So if you go on to our main page and you click on the summer reading connection, there will be something that says book groups, and you can see what we've selected for the summer. Do you want to show them that? We can actually show it to them now. Um, oops. Uh, the Lincoln City Library. Is yeah, we don't, we don't have this one bookmarked, but um, can you give her your website? Okay, it's just um, lincolnlibraries.org. Yeah. And Sorry, Krista, we're throwing her a uh, Yeah, we yeah, threw her a loop here. Um, anyway, yeah. though, that has the list of books that, um, that we're going to be reading this summer, and yeah. so if others are interested. Now, to save time and energy with our kids' book groups, Okay, see where it says be creative? Scroll down. There. Yeah, the summer reading program. Okay, and then it says, let's see, uh, keep going down, scroll down. Still oh, it's still loading. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Oh, it wants you to take a survey. You could ignore the survey. You can go back and fill it out later. <laughs> um, let's see, just. There's Teens Read. Okay, those are the teen book groups. So if you click on that, you're going to get the, um, the list of books. And there, there's the voting online for two of the groups. That's a, for a new thing that we're doing this year, is letting the kids vote online before they join oh, the book group about which book they'd like to read. Perfect. So that's kind of cool. And then um, up at the top, I think if you just click on the summer reading um, information, go up a little bit more, Krista. Okay, so we're, yeah. I don't see a direct connection to book groups, but it should be in that summer reading information if you can click on it. What we found with our kids' book groups is that we do a lot of we do a lot of series books. We do a Magic Tree House, American mm. Girl, um, those kinds of things. Those are wildly popular. Um, I co- sort of fought against that for a few <laughs> years because I was this purist and thought, no, kids need to read all these different things and they need to read this great literature. And um, we just discovered that that kids wanted to do that. I mean, the Ragic Treehouse books are, are full of history and information, and they also have printed guides that oh. go with them. And so, and the same with American Girl. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. historical things. And, and those are what the kids are familiar with, and those are what they want to read. So we've gone to much more um, sort of pre-done book groups, and it saves our staff a lot of time. And you've reconciled yourself. Yeah, with those I got over it. <laughs> okay. I got over it, yeah. And this link right here. This book right, exactly. Yeah. Check our online okay. information. So there is the list. We have 20 um, some book groups going on this oh summer gosh. in Lincoln. About 300 families are involved. And wow. It's a big deal. Wow. It's a wonderful thing. That's huge. Yeah, there's our Read Aloud Please, which is for second and third graders. We have a Spanish language book group that meets during the summer downtown. And then the other side is the Reading Together. That's for fourth and fifth graders and their parents, and then, of course, the teens join their book groups without their parents. Imagine that. (laughs) I think that's fascinating. Um, We're getting to about the end of the hour, and I'd like to just ask some reflection questions, because I think we've gone over a lot about the particulars, and I don't want to just keep hammering those, because in the end, you'll find what works for your folks. You'll find what works for the people who join your group, and I'm just passionate about book groups. I think they'll survive every sort of social networking. I think they'll survive everything. I think that text is not dying. I I love the feel of a book. There's nothing like cracking open a new book. And I think that talking about books, I just I just love it. And I would never. I think there's never. These are never going away. And so I, 
that is why I want people to start or think about joining or leading a book group. So I found some kind of interesting questions that I thought might be right. Um, one is, how do you consider your book group a success? How would you judge if things are really going well? And if maybe things need to be adjusted? What, what are the criteria that you would say that went great or that went poorly? And I have found at the end of the night, people have different <laughs> judgments about that too. Definitely. But what would you think, how do you know if it's going well? Well, Lisa, I know that um, the first time I went to your book group, I was so excited. I know at lunch the next day, I was going on and on about it. But my big my big thing was we talked about the book for an entire <laughs> hour and a half. Like that was so awesome to me. Now, other people might not think that's so awesome, you know, but to <laughs> me, that was, that meant that book group was successful to me. I think if, if everyone's respectful, if everyone gets to say what they wanted to say, and if you really run the book out, I mean, you got, yeah. you got everything you could get out of your discussion, I think it's successful. And I think that you just have that feeling at the end um, that and it, it's, it's going to vary a lot for different people at different times. Um, but I think that that's uh, the pleasure and joy of it is that sometimes you're going to come out of the discussion and just think that was so great. And other times you're going to think, eh, not so good. But, you know, there's always next time. Mm -hmm. Now, what about in the kids group? How do you consider those successes? Well, with the kids group, sometimes it's really hard to tell because kids can tend, sometimes we have really quiet groups and it's just like, you know, just trying to get anything out of them is really difficult. What I find though is that kids will say things to me later a lot of times, mm -hmm. I think, and I think that's a lot of the way that kids are in adults. Too. You start thinking you all about something, mm -hmm. you think about it. And actually, the, the beauty and the joy of it comes later. It's not something that you feel immediately. Um, and I think with the book groups, just getting the kids and parents together to talk about things that they may not want to talk about or they may have never talked about before. To me, that means the group is successful, just that the parent and child signed up to read together. Mm -hmm. And the parent is making this say, this is a legitimate thing and an important thing to do. So, so it's not about the numbers. Yeah. It's really more about I Yeah, and I don't... I. I, I, we like to have good discussion, but we don't have that expectation that it's always going to be this fantastic discussion. So. Rita, you have a question, but what can we answer for you? Do you want to chat something? You can just type on that text chat button at the top, and on more on the right side, and let us know what your question is. And while you're typing that, I'm going to ask Vicki another question, but we won't stop read it before we answer your question. So you can get that to us either on a microphone or in the chat. I am happy to answer that. Okay. Well, while we're waiting for Rita's question, um, oh, okay. Talk about the dominator in the group, <laughs> one who won't let others talk. Oh, Rita would have to bring that <laughs> You know, um, I've read things that I, I was a classroom teacher for a little bit, and there's some obvious things that you can do. Um, and I was just reading some examples in my book group blog when there's two people talking and something's going on. Or you know, you're talking about a dominator. Something that I've done is to say, Mary, I haven't heard from you, and Don, I haven't heard from you, and I will, I will really call out people's names to say, now we've heard a lot about Jan's opinions, and I might just <laughs> say stuff like that. Th that would be my perspective. I will call the names of people who literally haven't had a chance to say anything, and sometimes I'll use a go-around-the-room technique. Mm -hmm. Let's go around the room and everybody answers this question the dominator only gets their turn exactly so sometimes you can employ that technique to make sure everybody says something and when it gets to their turn they might say well I don't know that I have an answer and we're going to come back to you then because they want you to answer it Exactly. And you might really just force it. Do you have something to add for a dominator problem? Oh, yeah, because there, there are people who process much more slowly. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like when, you're, when you speak a foreign language and everyone's talking so quickly that you don't have a chance to even mm -hmm. form your response. And so those people you really have to give a chance to. But I, uh, both of your suggestions are good ones, and we use both of those in training okay. um, to teach kids. And I think it's one of the things that we do with our kid book groups is we do go around at the beginning and say, 
tell me one thing that you found interesting or that you want to talk about. And every child can come up with one thing usually. And then I, I make little notes on a pad and always come back to that. And I think calling out certain yeah. names and people um, really works well. Also. Okay. I guess those are our best suggestions, Rita. I hope that those are helpful to you. And it helps to call if you can know all your book group members by name. And probably it's a group of friends or community citizens. Call them out by name. And then the round the room technique. You might just say, tonight we're going to, everyone's going to answer the same questions. Maybe conversation will get going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's an excellent question, though. And one, you put a group of humans in a room, you're going to get that. And I think sometimes you do just interrupt and just say, okay, well, you know, what about that? What do you think, John? <laughs> and just cut the person off. I yeah. mean, I think that we have done that in our yeah. book groups before. Let's talk about some memorable book discussions. Sometimes I think that leads to elements of what, what are successes or what books mm. breed success. What are your, and we'll, maybe we'll just wrap up with this one. What were your most memorable book club nights? or days or afternoons with kids or either adults. I well, have a few, and you'll share some of your I remember one at the very beginning of my book group when we had just this awesome chemistry, and it was a book that was about kind of hidden things that happened in a small town, and I had, there's three sisters in my book group, and it came out that they had all had this very similar experience with their high school principal who hadn't molested them or anything, but he, he provided alcohol at parties for these kids, mm-hmm. and all three of them had experiences but none of them had ever talked about it before and it came out that and night. it came out in the book group and it was so interesting wow and so that to me really stands out because I just remember that being an evening where we were all just like wow <laughs> <laughs> that's a really big thing and the sisters of course felt like it was really a big thing too because they had somehow never talked about it wow so, I, I, my one of my favorite book groups was a night of intimacy. Also, um, not a lot of people showed up. It was a Vietnam War theme book that mm. one of uh, a Vietnam vet had chosen for our group, mm. and everybody had very deeply seated feelings that they'd never voiced. Mm. And in fact, when they voiced them to the group, it became quite emotional. And there was this level of confidence mm. and trust in the group that just almost brought me to tears because I thought. These people are really bearing their soul, mm-hmm. and they're bearing it to the book group wow. because of the communi- because of the trust that we put into that mm-hmm. group. And I would never reveal anything about that evening, yeah. but just the generality of it was transforming. And I liked that we found these things out about these people, and they just made themselves raw to us, sharing their thoughts and feelings. And I really respected the people who shared what they did. Well, when you think about it, I mean, people read for different reasons, but one of the reasons people read is to see things through other people's eyes and to experience things that we can't really experience. Yeah. And the book group just takes that one step further. So it's all about sharing and learning. And if you're if you're into that, those are going to be really great moments for you because that's why you're in a book group is to share. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's interesting that both of us had experiences where something deep was shared that made it so satisfying. Yeah, and beyond anything I would have ever imagined. Okay, well, Krista's put some slides together that um, <laughs> that you will have as a part of this presentation that have websites. And I'm, yeah, I would like to just go to the one where the, the um, I just want to point out the last one, book club kits. If we could, what I've included in these slides are some excellent resources, I and mean, we've alluded to those throughout our discussion. And this, this particular slide I'd like to pay attention to, if you want to get a hold of multiple copies of, book, of books that are really geared towards book discussions and you're having trouble getting started and you want some ideas, both from Vicky's and my libraries, we offer book club kits. And that just means they're all there, self-contained. I need eight copies of this book. You can hand them all out that night and the club is good to go. So it's just a club in a box. You can just get it right off the ground and get it going. So pay attention to those websites if those would be helpful to you. And contact either of us if you have additional questions. Um, We're almost at the top of the hour. Are there any last questions for either of us? You've got our contact information. If you think of something later, don't hesitate to call us or email us. 
we both obviously feel passionately about this, so we would love to hear, hear about your, your experiences. Yeah, and if anybody is trying to get um, book groups for kids off the ground, you can email me or call me, and I'll be happy to yeah. tell you. We've been doing them at Lincoln City Libraries for 15 years. We started with three book groups, and we've grown to the 20 that we currently offer. Wow. So, Vicki's your person for that. I would not be your person for that. <laughs> So you've got all of our contact information. I appreciate your taking time to spend with us. We're at 10.59, so I think we are we need to wrap up. No problem. Um, just want to let you know also that all of these links that were in this PowerPoint that I just whipped through very quickly <laughs> um, are in the Commission's Delicious account, so you can go to our Delicious account. That'll be linked out of the um, recording when I put it up as well. Um, the NLC reference Delicious account tagged as Encompass Live and Book Group. Um, but I'll give you a link for all of that as well when we do the recording. Um, so I guess if there's no further questions right at the moment, we can wrap it up. Um, thank you very much for attending. I hope you join us next week when um, Lisa will be back again. Yes. <laughs> Doing um, Meet the Librarians behind, behind Ready at nlc.state.ne.us. So if any of you use that people. email address, you can see what we look like. The other two <laughs> folks. Oh, thanks, Crawford. Yeah, we're getting some applause. There <laughs> thank you, go. Emily. We'll enjoy the Thank session. you so much. Thanks for joining us. And if you think of questions later, I, I sincerely mean it. Um, let us know because we would be most happy to to respond to your questions. And we'll let you know how our book group went tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, a comment down here too. Any Thanks for a very informative session. We love book discussions and you gave us some good ideas. Excellent. Thanks, Laura. Um, Laura. Thanks, Laura. And Thanks for joining us this morning. Keep up the reading groups or get them started. We'd love to hear about how things are going. Thanks. Thanks. See you all next week. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.